What is up, guys? Frosty Austin 0232 here today for another Frosty Features. Today, we move on to the first of our Superior 6 characters, our Legendary for the team, our next set of Trials in Marvel Strike Force, the Green Goblin. So, if you haven't been here before, what this is, is a comic book background on the tunes that you use in Marvel Strike Force. And I am your not-so-humble guy. So, with all that, let's begin. According to Scopely, while attempting to improve upon a financially promising strength enhancing formula, Norman Osborne accidentally inhaled the serum. Contact with the serum gave Osborne immense strength and genius intelligence, but at the cost of his sanity. He created the persona of the Green Goblin and used his newfound abilities to terrorize New York City, especially Spider-Man. Uh, we will rate Scopely's definition of the Green Goblin later in this feature. So, there's our man of the hour, Green Goblin, in all his glory. His name is Norman Osborn. As a reminder, we typically, in Frosty Features, we stick to Marvel 616 canon. In this case, we will be only talking about Marvel 616, uh, 616 canon. Just so we're aware. First appearance, Amazing Spider-Man number 14 in 1963. Very, very early addition to the Spider-Man rogues gallery and perhaps one of the most famous uh, people in said gallery. People, villains, whatever. Are, are, are villains people? Who knows? What, what do we rate him? Power slash abilities. His powers and abilities are surprisingly lack, right? He uses a lot of tech. The Goblin Guider, the Pumpkin Bombs, things like that. Um, his formula was an offshoot so as far as spider-man's concerned the spiders that were experimented on the radiated spiders that gave spider-man his powers were in attempt to recreate the super soldier serum that captain america had that's how spider-man got his powers green goblins the exact same way it is a different formula that oscorp was working on and it had some pretty bad side effects so it it it, it was successful in giving him superhuman abilities but it did eventually cause him to have to have a separate personality a dual identity if you will uh which was the goblin and norman finds himself very often trying to appease the goblin uh so it was a all he is a superhuman super speed super strength super reflexes his in extreme intellect predates him using the serum and on times where he loses the goblin or the serum gets kind of purged from him he is still formidable due to his insane intelligence but it is not a power in the grand scheme of things he is only superhuman on the level of superhuman he's he is just human plus right uh the tech is what makes him the tech and his craziness and his his genius make him uh m more formidable right um yeah aliases so my man's got a lot of aliases he's been around for a long time and like i said he is an extraordinarily popular character um so just a few of them being the goblin king there's a bunch of goblins in the marvel lore there's green goblin hobgoblin demogoblin uh so he ends up being the goblin king or goblin lord he right now in the comics he's serving as gold goblin which looks super cool uh, he also has a stint, especially with the Dark Avengers, when uh, Goblins purge from him, and he has a stint as the Iron Patriot. And then also a more recent in the Absolute Carnage run, we see him as Red Goblin or the Green Goblin that has the Carnage symbiote, uh, which was super cool too. So a lot of the, st the stories that revolve around G Green Goblin, that's when you know Marvel's pulling out the good guns, right? Um, he's been in enough that there is some trash, but a lot of the main... Green Goblin serves as a huge pivot in comics, especially uh, for obviously in Marvel, uh, but especially with the Spider-Man lore, right? So he's when you see him come out, sometimes it means things are about to hit the fan, and they typically do. Affiliations: Dark Avengers, Sinister Six, Thunderbolts, Hellfire Club, and many, many more. Green Goblin's been around a while. He's a he's one of the main more or less rogues of spider-man and many other people he's very influential in the marvel universe he's been involved with every team and all their mothers right <laughs> um uh where have we gone background he is a new yorker he resides in new york he he's heinous in new york and he runs the world from new york it is what it is who died emily so you can't be a superhero supervillain without somebody died 
In this situation, his wife dies. Uh, so he, he, his wife, Emily Osborne, he, they have one child, Harry Osborne, which all of us, I hope, are uh, familiar with uh, to some extent. So Emily ends up dying, which pushes uh, Norman to, into a depression. So Norman was chill. He was a cool dude. He was fine for a while. And then Emily dies and it pushes him into a deep depression and he pushes Harry away and he just kind of ab absorbs himself into a work. So he becomes this really distant kind of cold father figure. And he, he as he starts to spiral, he starts making some pretty, pretty piss poor decisions. The product of nightmares. How did the Green Goblin become the Green Goblin? Well, uh, it's actually uh, the fun thing I find about Green Goblin and, uh, you know, I don't think it's super debatable, but Green Goblin is a ripoff of Batman in a weird way. So he is a ripoff of both the Batman and the Joker. So Batman decides to be a decides to be Batman because he, you know, depending on which version of Batman you read, there was a dream. He had a situation with a giant bat. He's traumatized by this big bat figure, right? So he's like, I want to instill my fear to other people. <laughs> Literally Green Goblin. Green Goblin had nightmares about this giant Green Goblin attacking. So he decides to take on that persona because it scares him and he wants to inflict that fear on other people. His personality is also, his personality and his freaking color palette is the Joker from Batman as well. Right? So he's, he, he, you know, he's a big, he's got a, the, he's known for his laughter, his chaotic approach to things. He can be good or bad depending on how he feels that day. So he really is, he's, he's this fun mix of, uh, and he's, you know, the billionaire kind of situation like Bruce Wayne. He, he's, you take Batman and Joker, smash them together, it's Green Goblin. Fight me. Uh, so yes, Green Goblin as a, a title, as a character, is the product of Norman Osborn's nightmares. Um, his success came with a price, uh, so, uh, through retcons and things like that, um, after Emily dies and he's spiraling in depression, his business is also failing, so if you know anything about Norman Osborn, you know that he is a ex very extraordinarily successful businessman, but this came at one heck of a price, so as he's failing and he's, tr he's trying so hard to redeem his company, he is approached by none other than Mephesto, which, honestly, as far as the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man goes, it surprises me how often Mephesto will come up in the situation. Uh, but he's approached by Mephesto, and Mephesto is like, Yo, I can promise you uh, great success, great power, and you'll be the strongest dude ever, but you gotta give me your son's soul. He didn't ask for his Norman's soul, he asked for Harry's soul. And Norman's like, yeah, no, nah, that's not gonna happen. Um, get out of here, devil man. And Devil Man was like, I but uh, call out when you need me because uh, you you are definitely gonna say yes to this. And so uh, you know, not very long later, Norman's like, Hey, Devil Guy, um, I gotta, I, I, I'll, I'll do the deal if we amend it one one teensy teensy bit. And Mephesto's like, I uh, I don't really do amendments, but all right, what is it? He's like, You could have my son's soul, but you have to make me forget that we ever had this conversation. And so Mephesto's like, oh, easy, done, snappo, wappo. So then um, all of a sudden, Norman Osborn turns it around. Super, super successful business. Harry's soul is for Mephesto. And uh, Norman totally forgets that he even made the deal in the first place. Uh, which is just a... a I, I, I love that plot point. I think it's it's really fun and it's really neat. Um, uh, and he deals with the devil and making yourself forget them. It's, it's just interesting to me. I don't know. There it is. Moving on, relationship. So Emily Osborn, her maiden name is Lyman, was his wife, now deceased. Um, Harry Osborn is his son. By the way, the Osborns all die, come back, die, come back, etc. Emily, not so much, but Harry and Norman all the time. Uh, or they die and then they're not dead. Uh, yeah. Gabriel and Sarah Stacy are his uh, biological children, though uh, they are not claimed. And Normie and Stanley Osborne are the grandsons of Norman Osborne. Outside of that, he has random allegiances, allegiances and things, but they're very fleeting. Uh, he's kind of all over the place, and he's definitely a, a backstabber pretty hard. You know, typical villain Joker type. Um, so he's not super trusted, so he doesn't have any super reliable, you know, base of anything. So that's what it is. He doesn't have a whole bunch of relationships. Notable events. 
the green. Okay, so that's the, this. The problem with the, with fro the 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 way that I have Frosty Features set up, Green Goblin falls victim to it so hard. There's there's a few characters, but Green Goblin's so pivotal. I have to talk about some of the main events, right? So this since the, it, this is in lieu, uh, this is for Green Goblin Classic. We have to talk about the two most influential things Green Goblin ever did, and it was so early on in the Spider-Man lore, but we have to talk about them. So, identities. So, uh, Green Goblin is one of the first villains to discover and reveal to Peter that he knows that Spider-Man is Peter Parker. In the same issue, so what, what happened? What happens is Green Goblin is, once again, tell me if this isn't or is, is or isn't Joker, but... So the green in the fights, the original fights between Green Goblin and Spider-Man, Spider-Man pretty much couldn't take Green Goblin. He got his butt kicked over and over and over, and Green Goblin wouldn't kill him because it wouldn't be that fun, right? He's got to humiliate him first, so he devises a plan to get to figure out who Spider-Man is. So what he does is he gets his uh, little group, and you can find them online. They're really inner. They're kind of entertaining. They're they're pretty lame, but he puts together a group. To, it puts together a group called the Enforcers, and he su supplies them with a gas that he creates, and this gas is to uh, nullify Peter's spider sense. So after fighting the Enforcers and keep kicking the living crap out of him, he did ends up he ends up getting gassed, and his spider sense is null and void. And Green Goblin kind of just tails him back to the to the Parker home, which is just not what you want as a superhero. So then, after Peter gets inside or what have you, uh, Green Goblin is standing out in the yard. He's got his beatbox in the air, and he's like, I know who you are, Peter. <laughs> right? Um, uh, that's how that worked in the movie, and that's how it works here. He's standing outside. He's, you know, in the rain with the beat with the beatbox. It, it, that's just saying, I know who you are, Peter. He's taunting Peter from the yard. So... Spider-Man's like, ah, oh, hell nah, I'm gonna protect Aunt May, and he jumps out, and he's like, let's go, Green Goblin, and, uh, Mr. Gobby is like, alright, let's go, and he kicks crap out of Spider-Man again, and kidnaps him. So, he kidnaps him, he he knows he's Peter Parker, etc., and he takes him to the wa his waterfront hideout, and he, he, he wakes him up, you know, smelling salts, uh, whatever, and he's like, okay, well, I'm a villain, and this is the 60s, so obviously... I got to monologue. So here's what happened. I'm the Green Goblin. <laughs> Norman Osborn. So in the same key issue, do we have uh, him revealing Spider-Man's identity and him him revealing his own uh, enemy? And Peter automatically is like, oh my god, you're Harry's dad. What the hell? And he's like, yeah, I'm freaking crazy, bro. You've been messing with me all the wrong ways, right? Uh, and he's like, this is how I became the Goblin, I was experimenting with stuff, got shot in the face, here we are, right? It's awesome, this is great. Now, I'm gonna untie you, because it's not gonna be fun killing you, just chilling around. So, anyway, as most villains do when they decide to untie the hero, um, he also bothers to point out that Spider-Man's never beat him, uh, so he unties Spider-Man to, I guess, kill him, uh, in a, in a better way, I guess, and Spider-Man's like, yeah, not this time, Gobs. And he fights him, and he he hits him into a some electrical wire, which stun him and make him fall into a vat of chemicals. These, uh, which in turn he gets you know rescued or whatever, which in turn it gives him amnesia, and he forgets he he forgets the last couple of years, which include him being the Goblin. So from this issue, so this is Amazing Spider-Man number thirty-nine. I did use my notes. Um, uh, this is Amazing Spider-Man number thirty-nine. He does not come back as Green Goblin for almost. It's uh, over 80 issues, so he forgets he's Green Goblin, and he's gone for quite a while. But when we see his return, it is one of the most pivotal moments in all of comic history, so we have to talk about it. Notable, ev notable event number two, hopefully isn't a surprise to anybody, but it's the death of Gwen Stacy. So, often marked as the milestone that ended Silver Age comics and moved us into Bronze Age of comics is the death of Gwen Stacy. So, after so long, Norman, uh, he, uh, he's running his business, he's doing his thing, and Harry gets hard addicted to drugs and he blames, he blames Peter, he blames MJ, he blames Gwen Stacy, whatever. And with this, he starts to spiral into depression, which enables the Goblin persona to come back. And with the Goblin coming back comes his memories. And immediately he's like, I have got to kill Spider-Man. 
I have to kill him. This has to end. Now is the time. So now with Peter thinking that the goblin's gone, he has a big advantage to so and him remembering everything. So he goes and he kidnaps Gwen Stacy and he's flying around on his goblin glider at the Brooklyn Bridge and he's like, yo, Peter, I got your girl, what you gonna do? Right? And Peter's like, oh shit, that's not good. I don't like that. Uh, I'm gonna swing over there. And so he goes and he he he's trying to get Gwen back to He's trying to get Gwen back from the uh the clutches of the green goblin ah, ah, right um so they fight for a while while green goblin's holding gwen and uh spider-man starts to get the upper hand and he's about to grab gwen and then green goblin throws gwen off of the brooklyn bridge and in response spidey breaks away from the goblin he thwips towards uh gwen and he catches her leg and he's like oh good i i saved her good things and then when he gets her in his arms he realizes that her neck is broken and she's dead then with him freaking out and just like having this big having this big moment he has this big emotional mess because gwen stacy's dead green goblin is like yeah this is pretty freaking funny i'm gonna go away uh once again plot point problems here his goal was to kill spider-man he kills his girlfriend and is like yeah that's, that's fine uh, so he leaves and then this is where we first see that peter holds back like that's a big thing about spider-man is he he never goes full out on 95 percent of his enemies because he's not aiming to kill anybody right so in this situation he becomes so distraught by the loss of gwen stacy that he 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 pretty much is like all right we're not playing with Green Goblin anymore. So he tracks down Green Goblin and beats the ever-loving tar out of him to the point where he's about to kill him. And he's like, you're not worth it. I can't stoop to your level, whatever. And this is where the scene from the Sam Raimi Spider-Man kind of comes from is uh, Green Goblin sitting there all with his, you know, his his butt kicked. And he pulls up, he's like, he's like, oh, I'm going to distract you and make... I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna distract you, make my predator bomb go off. But instead, the goblin glider uh, swings up, and he tries to charge it at the back of Spider-Man to kill him from behind. Spider-Man's Spidey sense goes off, and just like in the movie, he hops over him and bam, impales Norman Osborn and kills him. He's not actually dead. Uh, he, you know, he dies. He obviously dies in the Sam Raimi movie. Spoiler alert: It's been 20 years. Watch the movie. Uh, so. For a very long time, Norman uh, Osborn, Green Goblin, is thought to be dead, and that's what it is. So that marks that is where they said, "Oh, the Silver Age is over." They killed they killed one of the main characters' girlfriends. A huge shift in tone happens, and we move on to the Bronze Age, which includes the Space Age, which is a whole can of worms. Uh, so anyway, yes, two extraordinarily pivotal mo moments and boy do the pivotal moments keep rolling from the Green Goblin as time goes on. So definitely check out a lot of these classic comics about the Green Goblin. Uh, they pertain directly to the G Green Goblin classic. We're getting in the game. All right. And power level. Marvel Strike Force doesn't care about power level, but here on Frosty Features, we do. And now the way this works, if you are of a multiversal power level, you are a threat to the multiverse as it stands and can topple it as it is, right? So in toppling the multiverse, uh, you not and just your reality, but all realities that exist at once. Universal means you are a threat to your reality. Maybe we can hop over to another one and then end that one. Cosmic means you are a threat on the small end on a planetary scale, and with enough time and effort, you can take out things like a solar system or a galaxy. Nuclear means you have power on the small end, limited to that of a nuclear bomb, so you could take out things like small cities or up to a planetary body. Super Soldier means that you are beyond all capable all capabilities of human by every means. You are beyond all peaks. You can take out things like brick walls or maybe a city block. City level means that you are a human trained to the utmost peak level of humanity that can be done. So this is where a lot of our mercenaries, our secret agents, our spies and things like that are uh, located in marvel and then there's greg greg is the undead asgardian that is spawned by hella and marvel strike force and alone he doesn't amount to much so due to that and as the undead asgardian physiology for the sake of argument we are putting greg at the same level as a human being therefore if i am 
mowing my lawn and uh, I, uh, I I push it really hard because I'm mad at Greg, I theoretically could beat up Greg with my lawnmower, right? Uh, that is what it is. So, uh, in this situation, in the case of Green Goblin, we have a man that has essentially given himself the Super Soldier Serum based on Captain America. He's he's smarter than Captain America, but he's 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 kind of the same level of strength. And due to the fact that Captain America is sort of the the cornerstone for the Super Soldier level on the scale, um, Green Goblin finds himself right at Super Soldier. As a reminder, power level does not equal influence. So on, on the influential spectrum, we find that Norman Osborn very much falls into nuclear cosmic even, but as far as his actual physical ability is actually with his tech and things like that, we don't really see him go much bigger than Super Soldier uh, pretty much ever. So he very much is kind of right there with Spider-Man. That's sort of the point, right? And as far as the blog post description of Green Goblin goes, honestly, uh, it's trash. They some of this is th this stuff is actually pretty wrong um saying that uh let's see upon a financially promising uh strength enhancing formula he didn't really need that uh it didn't give him in uh, genius intelligence he already had it and uh da -da -da -da, it, 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 it he didn't create the persona the persona came to him he named it he, he gave it a form but it, it developed throughout his insanity, so I wouldn't say that the, the it g just gave him that. Uh, so it's sort of piss poor. It's very it's very short, very brief, and it doesn't really go too far into it. So um, uh, I, they didn't even try. That's just what it is. All right. That is Frosty Features Green Goblin. I hope that you all enjoyed it. Please let me know your favorite goblin moments in the comments, or if there's anything uh maybe i got wrong let me know down below please like share and subscribe here on youtube it doesn't cost you anything but a couple of clicks and it helps me out so so much uh as a reminder i stream every sunday at the link above on twitch 8 a.m central standard time where we do frosty features live i hope that you all have a fantastic fantastic weekend most importantly y'all stay cool